Right. So my meditation this morning has come to me. And Ann and I have been talking a lot over this, this interesting time of COVID. And one of the things that comes up a lot is that we don't know about the external world. And what I thought about this morning is a question that was asked of me a couple of years ago when I was going through a struggle. And it was just a little personal thing, but the person was very kind and she said to me, Karen, what do you know? Open-ended question, and I put that in my brain stem in my present thought in my present moment. But I bring in what do I know? What do I know about my health, about my resiliency, about my joy, about my perseverance, about my following rules, my commitments. When I go into the things that I do know, it acts as a salve on the many, many things that we that collectively I don't know about things that are happening in the world. How much do I feel willing to give in? When I come back to the core of what do I know, there's a beautiful two-word meditation that comes into this world practice today of sat and nam. These two words, sat and nam. So close your eyes, please. Um, actually, before you close your eyes, I'm going to show you the mudra for this morning. So bring one hand in front of you, palm up, the other hand palm up on top of it. Nice. And make your own rendition of the hold. So joining your thumbs together. So palms, palms hold, so you're supporting your hands one way or the other. And then just join your two thumbs together. So then dropping your head as you look down into your hands. Backs are straight, top of your head is long. As you join your two thumbs together, there's your wisdom point. It's not to be impressed. Relax your shoulders. And as you gaze down at your hands in this beautiful mudra of the loop of wisdom and the beautiful full moon that we're going through time right now, when we join the right and the left side, we can find the balance. And in the center of your palms, when you're in one palm holds the other, Center of that palm is your wisdom center. What do you know? What do you know about yourself? What do you know about your joy? About your commitments? About your friendships? About your faith? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. As you take your deep breaths, inhaling through your nostrils, exhale through your jaw and your mouth, just letting everything go, relax your jaw. Spines are straight, bellies are pulled in, one palm with one hand is supporting the other, thumbs, tips are joined. Balancing the right and the left side, with the support in the middle, it comes together right at the middle point of those thumbs. It creates a circle. Breathing in through your nose, allow the air to swirl up through your nostrils into your forebrain. As you exhale, release your shoulders, gently pull your bellies in. Relaxing everything down. Look at your sits bones. Beautifully grounded. Let your shoulders release. Sitting up straight at this point. And now please, holding the same mudra, drop your left ear to your left shoulder. Just allow everything to come down to the side. Catch up with my so people and allow that stretch to happen.
And then bring your heads back up to the center, and very gently allow your right knee to come down to your right shoulder, or the opposite way, whatever way you just went. Sorry, I'm turned around. And then lift your hands back up to the center. Beautiful. And one more time, dropping your faces forward. As you look down, gaze down at this hand mudra. Pull one mudra, one palm up, the other palm supported. And release your hands from this mudra, shake your hands out. Beautiful. Inhale, inhale, both arms come up overhead. Looking up, reach one hand up and then the other hand up. Isolating gently, side to side. Reach, reach, reach. Beautiful. Breathing as we do this, a little more challenging to take a deep breath while our hands are above our hands. And if I was behind you, I would gently pull your hands up. <laughs> so, just energetically, we can feel that. And then come to stillness. Intertwine your hands together and gently bring both hands, reversing hands, coming up overhead, pressing up and forward. Good morning, Barbara, on Zoom. And then gently come to the right side or the left side, coming over either way. Here's the good news we only have two sides. Right and left, come back up to center and then over, breathing out. We are not being filmed for any particular purpose. So you bring your hands down and then drop your hands behind you. you create some space. As you bring your hands behind you, shift your whole weight backwards and allow your hands. This is what I might call the sitting watching music and snow mask pose. So we'll just create that energy. Lift your chest, lift your hearts. Anahata, beautiful space here. Pressing your shoulder blades together, lifting your shoulders as though coming behind you and hugging open your shoulder blades. That's the studio, Gary. That's what? That's the studio at Tech. Take a look. Oh, oh We have Eddie. Hi, Barbara. Good morning. I'm going to put you on mute. Can you hear me? Can you see me okay? I do, and but it said unmute, so I did. The host That's is okay. asking. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not. Chins come to your chest. Feel that beautiful stretch in the middle part, upper part of your back. Inhale, open and lift your arms out. And exhale, bring it back in. Rolling it back in here. Coming down. And this time, as you open arms out, stretch your feet out in front of your legs, out in front of you, right here. Weight a little bit forward as you come down. Maybe you grab your shins, maybe you grab your toes. If you have a strap and would like to use, hey, do you want the strap? I'll get it for you. Uh -huh. You brought your own. Good job. Is that your bathrobe? Tie. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lady bring in her bathrobe tie, and I just loved it. Thank you for being creative with COVID. So as we're here, lift your chest now. Lift your chest. Everybody drop your shoulders. If it's hard to drop your shoulders, come back out of the pose and turn your palms up to be able to do that. These are just beautiful options that we have stretching coming forward. And now tucking your chins in, 
Drop your head to a bend. Bring both hands down to the sides of your shins. As your fingertips come down and palms come down, pull your chest forward. Gently pull your chest forward. I don't think there was a plumber out there. In cover, I wonder if her husband was doing this. Let me go to just a second. All right. Inhale, coming back up. Gently cross your face. And as you do this, oh, bodies in a rusted out screw, and that was it? I'm not getting so. Oh, well, you got to fix so. That's the main um, you're coming in. I need to mute you. Thanks, Barbara. If you could mute yours. Thanks. I'm hearing background noise. Oh, sorry. Okay. You're good. You're good. Now, can you hear me still, Barbara? Okay, good. Excellent. And please begin your barrel roll from the seated position. We're warming up. Keep your Keep your center of gravity right here on your sits bones on your mat and we roll around to open up the middle part of our vice. If you get to a place and it kind of goes, wait a minute, I need to stay there. Here's mine. There's mine. I'm just going to stay here and show you where my place is. If I feel it in my hip, I'm going to draw my hand down. This would be my spot. But come back, everybody's got their spot where they slept funny, or they served a pickleball serve a little oddly, or they jumped down. And let your body tell you what you need in this new deep stretch supported yoga class. Circle around the opposite leg, take a deep breath. Please don't forget about your breathing, so critically important here. And then gently, we're going to come forward with our weight and dropping our, our pads from behind us. We're going to come into child's pose. So bring your weight forward onto your knees. And Fred, you have your uh, sunny feet leg there for your body because we're going to come into a standing pose series. So when we get there, you'll have a chance to yeah. So come into hands and knees. And then drop back into child's pose. Wide knees, wide, wide knees if possible. How far back can you drop your hips now? Beautiful. Walking your hands over to one side. It does not matter which side, but whatever side you go to. Kim, you're going to stretch that uh, left hand of yours a little bit farther forward. Drop that um, armpit. That's the word I was looking for. Drop the armpit down. Maybe turn your cheek, resting on the bicep of the arm and stretching out a little more. Gives a little more juice into the stretch. Take a deep breath, inhale. And exhale, walk your hands forward again. And gently bring your hands around to the other side, extending out the arm to the side you're on. If you're on your left side, the left arm comes forward a little bit more. Nice, fancy, beautiful, beautiful. Breathe into that spot. Perhaps turn your head slightly and drop the cheek down with the outstretched arm. Nice. Bringing it back to the center. And then gently coming up to hands and knee position right here. Beautiful. Curl your toes underneath of you. Curl your toes under. And then gently pressing your weight back. Yep, so you got some pressure going down on, the, on your feet or your foot. Invite Barbara to bring a chair into her practice. Barbara, I'm speaking directly to you. If you would like to sit in a chair for the standing series of poses because of your vertigo, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to be demonstrating it with Anne. So if you would like to bring a chair into your yoga practice, or you can just do the standing poses by yourself and just be very gentle about dropping your face down. Right, that's for everybody. 
And from here, begin to shift your weight back. And I'm going to get you on your chair at this point. And we're going to slowly, slowly drop your heads down and come up into a standing position. Yeah, and slowly come up. And I'm going to move your chair behind you. Can you bounce for a second? Yeah, or grab me if you need to. Grab me if you need to. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, up into a standing position. I think one of the most beautiful reasons to teach swim class in different varieties is that we can adapt. Feet come about shoulder width apart. Patsy, let's turn in that sideways this way, and Shannon, same thing. And Fred, I'm going to help you out here. Let's see if you can turn your mat. If you step off your mat, I'll make the turn. I'll make the long way. Good. Double mat series happening here. Beautiful. All right, this keeps us feet on rubber. It's up to you. Can whatever you want to do in a semi wide legged. All right. Yeah, beautiful. That's what they did last time. Rich turn. Turn them, turn you. Good. So standing in mountain pose. Just. So the full moon salute is a circular, beautiful circular standing practice. So inhale, bring both arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, drop your hands down, if possible, closing your eyes into mountain pose. Palms forward, drop your shoulders, lift your chest, pulling the belly in, slightly tuck the hips under, and then rotate the tailbone back out. Tuck the hips under again. A little spinal flexion and extension here. Lower sacrum and then out. Finding a standing neutral pose. Tadasana is mountain pose. Feel your feet under you. Shoulders broadly. Chest lifted. Inhale. And exhale. Picture, if you will, perhaps Basalt Mountain, that beautiful full moon that was rising over it last night as he was coming down from Snow Mass and caught it from that side of Independence Pass. Mountain pose, strong and firm, rooted and planted, full of wisdom. And that's a similar question of what do you know? What do you know about yourself? Feet grounded down and open your eyes. Inhale, both arms come up overhead. Please hold your palms together, pressing in. Intertwine your fingers and point your fingers go up, index fingers go up. And then very gently come over to the right side. Gently, this is Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Stretch, inhale. Keep those sits bones grounded, Miss Anne. There you go. And coming over, and that's it. Bow, bowing out your ribs to the side. Right, hips don't move nice, very right? Good. Bring it back up to the center. And come the other way. Nice. As you exhale, this is a very cooling practice. However, Shannon and I both realized last night when we did this, it brought a little bit of heat up. And that's okay. So we're just going to go slowly through this, moving your toes. Beautiful. And bring it back up to center. Dropping hands down, open your arms to goddess pose. Right here. And then gently turn your feet out. Feet turn out to the side and drop down. Just drop into a spot. Nice. Feel that in your quads? Yes, yes. And Anne, lift your chest up. So we're good. Uh huh. I'm making you sit up straight in your chair. I get it. Good. And then extend arms, lift your knees, and extend out the starfish pose. Drop your shoulders. Nice. Oh, that was a beautiful adjustment. The whole room just dropped by a couple of inches. Drop your shoulders down. Make your elbows heavy. And then press your hands out to the side to really stretch. As so I'm pulling on either side of you, room opposites, pulling out. Beautiful, relax your arms down. 
bending your left knee ever so slightly. You can come into a bend or you can stay straight in your legs. You're going to reach out to the side. So good, and Drop your weight into your right sits bone. Mm -hmm. So we're not tipping yet. We're really just reaching for the counter across from us. Pulling bellies in, tipping hips under, reaching out, triangle pose, and then very gently begin to drop your hand down your left leg and bring the arm up. Good. Maybe turn your palm towards the ears on that wall. And as you do that, open your shoulder back and look up, lifting up. Take a deep breath here, inhale. Beautiful, nice, triangle pose. Ah, and then turn your faces down to the floor. Mm -hmm. Lift that arm way up overhead, Miss Patsy. Turn your palm in to do that. There you go, it's gonna be much nicer on your shoulder. And then gently rotate this, your, your left foot towards the mirror and dropping everything down into pyramid pose. So it's a forward bend. Nice, good. Right, would you like a chair just to have it to the balance? I'll grab one for you. Just stay put there. You don't have to sit in it. So in pyramid pose, bring your knee, your nose down to your knee. And stretch that right foot out behind you a little bit more. Good. So we're coming down into this pose. I'm with you on the same side. Good. And then very gently begin to drop that back knee down behind you. There you go. Right. Yep. Just drop everything down. Love, love, love these teachers. Nice hand. Stretch that leg. You're going to get the quad stretch by walking that right foot back. Good. Into this lunge, what I'd like everyone to do, if I put both hands on your chair, nice. Try to straighten your back and draw your left hip. Everybody draw your left hip forward and switch out so the same side as you can. Now what I want you to do is draw your right hip forward and then be able to lift both hands up right here to so lift. Beautiful crescent pose. This would be quite a crescent move. And then dropping everything, dropping both hands back down. Gently shift your weight to the back. Straighten that leg out in front of you. And lift. Uh huh. See if you can lift it. Stay on your chair. Do not fall off your chair. <laughs> Do not indicate that you're going to stand. I can't catch you from this far away. So lift your toes up. And you can do it to the front. It doesn't have to be. And so if, if you're comfortable staying there, what I'm trying to do is get the hamstring stretched. Yes. Again, draw the, the, the leg that's outstretched. Draw the opposite hip forward. So that's a, a, there you go. Draw that, the upper, draw that right hip forward. Nice. Beautiful. And then gently lifting your body up again. Bring the outstretched foot back underneath of you. This is an easier way to transition. So now you have both hands down. Turn towards the front of the room. Turn towards the front of the room or the front of your mat. Gently curl your toes under you. Coming up and then wide-legged pose here. So staying down. Come on, there you go. Beautiful. And then gently drop into your left knee. Straightening the earth, not bending deeply into the left knee, and this is literally just exactly what you're doing to stretch, stretch the inner thigh. Walk your hands over, please drop it to the other side. Fred, stay there, and then get your chair to the other side. If it doesn't serve you, then that far away from your body. Very careful with this. Right. Beautiful, everyone. 
and then turning your bodies the opposite way, uh -huh, way where before, and dropping that knee down behind you again. Lifting up into crescent pose, lift. It should be your opposite leg. So on the other side, we're this way and stretching out the hamstring. Be sure we just switch to get the other hamstring stretched. As you lift up, first the flexor, and then dropping hands down. Extend the leg out in front of you very slowly and gently, bringing your nose down to your knee. Beautiful hamstring stretch. Nice. Take a deep breath with this. Inhale. And then maybe you need a little bit more on the hip flexor. Can you try to drop your right hip down? Your right hip. There you go. Shift your weight. Good. And then bring your weight forward. And very gently bring both hands to the inside of that knee. If you have a friend, you're exactly where I want you to be. And then coming back up, draw that extended leg so that's behind you, back under you. And then you are in forward fold pyramid. So both toes are looking in one direction. Take your time to get into this pose. Dropping your head down. So our deep stretches in yoga do not always have to happen from a seated mat position. They can happen from beautiful standing positions. And then slowly inhale, hands come to the thighs to lift your body up. From here, one more quick extension from the back. Lift your hands out in front of you if possible. And then circling your left arm up and above your head, coming into triangle. Look, there we are. Who knew? Good, good. Maybe drop your left hand to your chair for a little support. There you go, nice. What can you do to twist open and triangle? Good. Good, holding this pose, pulling the belly in, opening that shoulder, maybe looking up at the ceiling and then looking down at the floor for just a moment. Good work, and bring it back up into standing. It's a starfish. So hands are straight out. You shift your weight for that. Good. Nice. Feet wide. Bring your bellies under and tip your hips from posterior going back. Tip everything under. So you have a flat body, flat back, little bend in your knees. Don't lock your knees here. Good. Good. And then slowly and gently, arms come up and we drop down into starfish. Or folks, into goddess pose from the starfish right here. Beautiful. Inhale, lift arms up overhead. Hands clasped together. Index fingers point up. And our final stretch side to side. And you have made a gorgeous full moon pose. The whole way around. It's almost like clock, clock numbers and hands. Nice. And then very gently unclasp your hands, drop your arms down, roll your shoulders out slowly. Opening and rolling out beautifully. One more time, circling out. And then very gently bending knees, grab your blocks if you have a block with you, if you'd like to support um, your Support your hands and your head. You're going to actually come down with it. As we do our forward fold, lean down right here. So feet are wide, as wide as you can get them, as wide as you can get them on your mats. A little bit of bend in your knees. And the beautiful part about having that chair friend and Ann, you're great where you are, unless you want to stand up to do this and turn around. But you're good where you are. As you come forward, you can drop down to your forearms. And you can walk one hand down. And what I want everyone to do is look and just for a moment, you've got straighten your backs. I 
I literally would want to put my great grandmother's china teacups on your back at this point. So when you pull our bellies up, we're rounding. Please drop your bellies down, lifting your sits bones, deep bend in your knees. The block is here for support. It's also to catch heads. If you would like a place to put, uh, put your thoughts and park them on your block, hands in front of you. And from here, walk your hands back and slowly come down to your mats. However, that's comfortable for you to do that. Bring one leg in at a time to your knees, wide legged child's pose here. Oh, that's your breath. Oh, the move into your uh -huh. What? You can't see me. Is that what you were saying? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Wide legged child's pose coming down through. Gorgeous. And Anne, we're going to get you back. There you go. Now the girl is catch. Let's go. Finish up practice. Beautiful. Release your jaw in this pose. Releasing your shoulders. As you drop down into this extended stretch, try to walk your fingertips out in front of you a little bit. Nice. And now, um, from your child's pose, come back up into hands and knees and begin to come down to your bellies. Just gently walking one hip back behind you. And then the other hip back behind you. Beautiful angle so you guys can see me. Oh, we did, I know, we did that 360 degree zoom forwards. We could just go ball above our head. All right. As we come down, beautiful hands come underneath your shoulders, right by your armpits. Please drop your foreheads down, shifting your hips side to side for that beautiful stretch in the lumbar sacral area. Oh, good stuff. Nice, everybody. Ooh. And from here, press the tops of your feet into the floor, your pubic bone presses down. Pull your bellies in. So first things first is to get the lower part of our body nicely uh, situated and supported. And then pulling your fingertips back, lift the top of your head towards the front of your mat, wherever you are on your mat, into cobra, tucking your elbows in, pressing on your tops of your feet, your pubic bone to lift. Take a deep breath, inhale. And exhale, come down. And inhale again, lifting up into Cobra. Beautiful back bend, stretch. And then exhale, come down, moving with your breath. Gorgeous, nice work, everybody. Maybe turning your one cheek to the side. You might actually feel a different stretch in your sacral area when you turn your head to one side. And again, pressing feet down, pulling abs in first to prep, then lifting up, lift, 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 tucking your chins in, long back of your neck, and coming down again. And then inhale one more time, lifting up. If you can float your hands off your mat, it's a beautiful way to uh, know that you're using back strength here and then coming back down. Good work. This time as you inhale, pull, pull your hands back to your shoulders, tuck your elbows into your body, and very gently coming up into hands and knee position through almost an up dog. Stay here in hands and knee position. 
extending your right leg out behind you, curl those toes under. Greg, why don't you walk up on your mat a little bit so you have toes on grip. <laughs> Amazing what a little rubber surface can do to not slide our feet. Everybody pull bellies up and in. Interesting way to do cat stretch here. Drop your, uh, you're tucking your tailbone under deeply. Chin comes in and then release your back and come into neutral spine and then lift your heads and your hips. Lifting up, squeezing shoulder blades together, good. And then again, curl under with that leg extended. We're getting some foot extension through our toes that are stretched out. Nice, Barbara, I can see you doing that beautifully. And then again, come back into neutral spine. Please lift that foot behind you and flex your foot. Drop your heads looking down at your mats. So the long back of your neck, bring that leg in close to midline. So we don't want our leg floating out to the side. We want the leg pulling into midline. Balance pose, a little bit of core work here, pulling in your abs. If you're able to extend your opposite arm, sunburn pose, gently. It's as though I'm pulling your arm straight out in front of you and your foot straight out behind you. Take a breath and bring that hand down and the knee down. Good work. Extend the opposite leg out to the side. Curl your toes under. Drop the hip of the leg that's extended. Kim, if this is hurting your wrist, a little bit twisting your wrist. Sometimes that feels a little bit better on our wrists if we don't want the right angle. Nice, Shannon. I'm going to do it too with you guys. Drop your heads down long. Drop the hip of the, of the leg that's out. Actually, you have your toes down. Good. Stretching out those toes behind you to open the muscles and the tendons, the structures of the feet, the bones. Nice. And now lift up that leg behind you. Drop the hip after you've lifted the leg. There's a tendency for the hip to want to turn and open, but we're going to pull our lower abs in to support the lower back, extending the opposite arm out in front. Good. Good. Little balance work. Keep breathing. Nice work, Fred. You can do this. And drop the hand and the knee down. Wide legged child's pose. Dropping your knees way wide on your mat, drop your hips down behind them, resetting the spine beautifully. Nice work. You come back up into hands and knee position. And please extend your left arm out to the side. Then lift up towards the ceiling in a gentle twist. Pull the bellies in. And we're going to come underneath the extended standing arm to gently turn and thread the needle for a spinal twist as well as a deep shoulder stretch. And please bring your opposite hand to your sacrum if that feels good. The standing hand can be in front of your face. Tap the tops of your feet on the mat so you're releasing tension there. And it's your choice whether to open, open that shoulder with the hand behind you or drop the shoulder down towards the mat. What does your body need today? Nice catch on your mat, Miss Anne. You okay? So gently bring one hand underneath. There you go. Good. Good, good, good. And then gently come out of this twist, coming back out of the hands in reverse, bring that hand up to the ceiling, counter move, 
and comes back down. Extend the opposite arm out to the side first. Get your positioning, get your weight shifting on your knees so that it's equal and into your hand three points. Then lift and open. Beautiful. And then gently thread the needle, dropping that arm under. Perhaps you stay on the standing hand. Gently drop your face down to the mat. Pulling your lower abs in to support your lower back. Tightening those toes. It really does help with stability. Perhaps you take your octopus standing hand and it now drops to your sacrum. Pressing that shoulder down and in that towards your, oh, your feet behind you. You really stretch that open shoulder. If it's more comfortable to have your face on the block, it's helpful for your body structure. You can do that with your blanket. Wonderful. Good work, everyone. Take a deep breath in here. Inhale. Part of the beauty of holding these stretches is being able to stay in them and allow our muscles to release. And then gently bring that hand from the back of your sacrum down. Plant the hand, come back up into the hands and knee position. Counter stretch, bringing everything over to the other side for this good work. And then coming back down and then resting back on you know, either place of block underneath you to sit on or your blanket. And I want you to sit on your blanket, bring your blanket roll behind you. Or you can just come back and sit if your knees will let you. If your knees will let you. That's bad. Sometimes cranky knees don't like us sitting like this. You do it right. Yep. All right. Peace. Then bringing your hands out to the side. Lift. Oh, open your palms up. Lift your chest up to the ceiling. Gentle back bend. Hands come up overhead, palms inter or fingers intertwined, palms in reverse and come up to the ceiling, pulling your bellies in. And if this gets too much for your knees, you can come up to a standing knee position if that feels more comfortable for your knees. I invite you to do that. For those of you who are still in Vera, that's perfectly fine. Bringing your hands down, crossing one hand over the other in front of you. Into evil arms, but however you get into your twist. Nice. She's sorry. She's a pretzel already. <laughs> there you go. Cross and twist and then bring your palms together. Beautiful. Nice friend. The other nice part about this class is if you'd like to sit in your chair, let me know what you feel like in your chair. We'll get that ready. But we're going to come down onto our back. So whatever works for you guys. Interestingly, I'm watching the room, and if your fingertips are extending towards the ceiling, you're letting go of energy. Okay? The other way to do that is to gently drop your fingertips down over your palm. The hand comes down over your palm. And then release the side of evil arms. Gently release your arms. Let them wiggle. Shake your arms out. And everybody come up to standing knee position at this point. You need to get some circulation back in those legs and toes. Maybe your knees are a little bit wide, toes together. Maybe that helps. Good. Everybody, hands come to the back. We haven't done the other side of the eagle arms. But I want you to gently, gently, gently coming back just a little bit, pressing your hips forward. Oh, you might feel this on the top of your quads, especially if you're hiking or walking or biking. And then tucking your chin in. Here's where the beauty of this stretch comes in safely. Dropping your chin down, then lifting your head up slightly. Good. And then come back to just neutral position. Beautiful. So gentle camel. The opposite hands uh, come out. Whatever hand you did before to twist, reverse it. And can you do it from a standing knee position? <laughs> And, 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 yeah, whatever one. And maybe tip your head side to side a little bit. Oh, that feels so good. 
I must have slept funny on one side because my body wants to release the left side of my body today. So tipping your head to the side. Nice. And then back up to center. Maybe tip your head the other way. Beautiful. And untwisting your arms from evil pose. Allow your arms to release and turn them in and out, rotating the shoulders nice and lengthy. From here, press your hands down to your thighs and side and gently begin to lift your arms behind you. So from here, I want you to shrug your shoulders up to your ears and then drop your shoulder blades back into the pocket. The pocket is right behind you. So again, open the chest. Maybe leaning back ever so slightly and bring one hand up, but keep your hips forward. Keep both hip bones looking forward. Nice. Subtle energy move here to not twist, but to draw the opposite hip forward. Good. Release your shoulders. Drop this hand down. Extend the other hand straight up to the ceiling. And now drop your body back just a little bit and Press the opposite arm behind you. Oh, and drop your whole shoulder girdle. Oh, I'm nice, Shannon. I saw that. <laughs> See, she went from I don't know to uh -huh. <laughs> This is the unwisdom body. This is the wisdom body. And then switch one more time, reversing the angle of your palms. So palms pressing back, the palms pressing in. Just rotate your shoulders with this beautiful stretch. Deep breath, inhale. Nice work, everyone. And then removing your props, we're gonna come down to our mats gently and slowly, coming onto your backs. Come here. Gently coming down, I'm gonna move my mat sideways for my zoom through. As you come down into your back, slowly dropping it down, plant your feet and bend your knees. Good. Bend your knees, good. Yeah. Slowly and gently lift your hips up to the ceiling. Counter pose and counter stretch for the back bends and the twists. Energetically pressing a block between your knees or actually putting a block between your knees creates great stability in the core and the hips. It's an option. Dropping your hips back down. This time, as you lift your hips, you're going to lift your hands slowly with the inhale up overhead. Lift, 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 lift. Inhale. As you exhale, slowly again, dropping your hips down one vertebra at a time to your mats. Nice work. Dropping it down. Good. One more time, please. Inhale and lift your hips up, up, up. Squeeze. Squeeze it. Block and lift. As you exhale slowly, bring hands down in front of you. Remove the block from between your knees and draw your knees into your chest, maybe one leg at a time. Good, good, good. Nice. Good. Rocking side to side, releasing your hips. And then planting your feet back down onto the mat. Feet are about mat width apart. What I want you to do is just drop one knee in. It doesn't matter which leg you drop in. Slowly and gently, maybe moving that foot off of your mat to the side. Rotating in, press your hand onto the hip of the knee that's dropping in. There you go. Pushing that hip towards the end of your mat. So it's a downward pushing motion. Good. It's, that's what I would be doing coming around. Pressing your hand down. Please be gentle and careful of your knee joint. Good. 
and then release that hip and the knee, draw the feet back onto the mat, drop your opposite knee in, drop the opposite knee in. So one knee is still standing, the opposite knee is dropping in. This is an outer hip stretch, QL in the back, your sacroiliac joint stretch. My hand almost automatically went, there's a wisdom body. What do I know? What I need to know is that hip wants to get longer, long torso press. Take a deep breath, inhale here, and exhale. Beautiful, bring that knee back in, and now again, bring both legs into your body, Grabbing behind your knees, behind your knees to the backs of your thighs, gently rocking side to side. Releasing the spine from our standing poses and the twists. And then very gently lifting your feet up to the ceiling, holding behind your knees if that helps. Try to release your shoulders here. So your shoulders aren't clutching up to your ears. Press your shoulders down. Extending your feet up to the ceiling. If you'd like to do legs up the wall pose here, that's an option to, plop, to allow your feet to feel supported. And now gently press your feet away from your torso. So you're drawing your feet away. You should feel your sacrum very much making contact with the floor. That's where I want to be for this next piece. And then dropping your feet down, hands go to the tops of your knees. Push your feet away from your body. So yeah. So draw your feet away from your body. Knees are wide. Knees are about shoulder width apart. Knees are kind of nice. So you're pushing your feet away from your body, stretching out your arms. This is an interesting way to stretch the shoulder girdle. Using the weight of your knees, you can also hold behind your legs, but it's a little bit more for the shoulder capsule to stretch by allowing the weight of my feet to pull my arms away from my body, my fingertips are gently holding the tops of my kneecaps. Tuck your chin in, and now lift your heads up off the floor, crunching up and curling up. Weight is still being pulled away. It's almost as though you're doing a half rock of coming up, holding the stretch. And then drop it back down to the floor. Please plant your left foot and bring your right foot on your left thigh, pushing open that hip. Oh. So we did the crisscross knees in for the external hip, and now it's the internal capsule. Pushing your hand on the inner part of your thigh. There we go. Take a deep breath here. Please flex the foot that's on your thigh, protecting the kneecaps of the joint. This is also another way to do pigeon on your back, gentle, uh, similar, very similar hip stretches without crunching the knees. And then drop your hand into the hip crease and you're pushing that hip crease away from, it's almost as though you want to pop your leg out. Push that hip crease away. Deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Release this foot from your thigh and switch to the other leg. Bringing that foot with the flex foot onto your right thigh, left foot and gently begin to push in the inside part of the inner thigh, your left thigh, to release and open that hip. Maybe 
point and circle your foot as it's on your thigh for a moment and then come to stillness with that foot in flexion. Deep breath, inhale. And as you exhale, drop the hand into the hip crease, into the pocket, inner, inner pocket of that hip joint, and push that hip bone away from the hip girdle. Doing this lovely good work. Ooh, that feels good. Nice. And deep breath, inhale. As you exhale, unwind the foot from the thigh and then gently stretching out all the way on your mats. We'll be into Shavasana, setting up for Shavasana. We're going to come around and help getting props underneath your knees or under your head. Let's see what you got here. Let me see that. Would you like them underneath your knees? There we go. Get a little bit closer. Allow your knees, allow your knees to fall open. Beautiful, Patsy. Allow your gaze to gently turn inward to your third eye. Beautiful, Barbara. Relaxing your shoulders. Allow your breath to come deeply into your nose, filling your belly, and releasing out.
out, take a deep breath. Gently, gently bringing yourself back into the present moment. Wiggling fingers and toes. Gently beginning to move your body, perhaps bringing one knee into your body first, and then the other rolling to your side. Stay there for a moment, taking a deep breath. Very gently coming back into our present moment. As you make your way back up to a seated position, find a comfortable place, either legs crossed or in Baddha Konasana. Feels good. Palms are open and up on your knees. Gently join your index and your thumb. This is a mudra of wisdom. What do I know? What do I know about myself? Where can I tap into this beautiful inner calm? Where when I need to be resilient, can I come back into the happiness and joy release of the serenity. Knowing we're all in the ebb and flow and this too shall pass. But in your wisdom body, ask yourself, what do I know? Holding that thought sacred, bring your hands to heart center and Anjali Mudra. Thumbs gently touching heart space joining your right and left sides as you press your palms together. It is with deep gratitude to all my teachers before me and to each of you as my guides today. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.